Yabba Dabba YouTube, what's up boys and girls, it's your boy Zockstar once again coming at you with another vlog. On today's vlog I'm going to talk about Shargal. It's been a topic that I wanted to talk about for a while now. This situation that's happening over there is bordering on ridiculous. As we all know the same thing happened to Borake last year in April, the place was shut down. Now due to I don't know whether it's locals or the tourists. People are just turning these places into cesspools. Sorry to use that word, but that seems to describe Barake from Duterte. President Duterte described Barake as a cesspool. And I feel that Shargao is heading down the same path. Now, I just want to read to you a few articles that I found online. There's numerous ones, but I just sort of seem to find a couple here. I'll go through them with you and we'll talk about this. So without any further ado, let's Scooby-Doo. Okay, so welcome back guys. Yes, Shargal. Um, Shargal is turning into a disaster. Something needs to be done. I have noticed there are a lot of a lot of uh, tourist vloggers, foreign vloggers, walking around doing their bit to keep the place clean, and I commend them. One in particular is a uh, what's his name, uh, Jackson Jackson Groves. Well done, mate. You're a legend. You and along with many others that I've seen travelling there, doing their bit, trying to keep the place clean. But it's not just the issue of keeping the place clean. It's whether or not the place can handle the influx of the tourists. Um, I'll read through some of these reports. Um, I found one on this uh, Minda News. Uh, this is our Minda now. Um, the title starts with Shargao, Shargao Resort Face Shutdown. Uh, Dapa, Shargao Island, Minda News, 22nd of February. Uh, Surigao del Norte, I think that's Governor Sol F. Matugas, Matugas wants to shut down operations of 99 resorts in Shargao, particularly in General Luna, which do not have environmental compliance certificates. Now, that's the same issue that Barake faced. A lot of the places didn't have these certificates and they were operating illegally. Um, according to the governor, General, Lu Ge General Luna alone has a total of 124 resorts of which only 25 have secured ECCs from the Environmental Management Bureau, the EMB. Now that's, come on guys, that's that's ridiculous. So there's 124 resorts that obviously have popped up in the last 12 months or so, and only 25 of them have the appropriate certification. Now, that's just, that's just madness. Um, but she allayed fears that Chiago would become the next Boracay. President Rodrigo Duterte threatened earlier this month that he would shut down Baraka as it has become a cesspool. This post is back in 2018. So this was just before they shut down Baraka. Um, I believe that was in April. So they're already talking about Chiargal having problems before they even started thinking about Baraka. Um, the main issue here is uh, she said she wanted to conserve the island whose landscape and seascape have been declared as protected area. It was learned that most of the resorts have built in proper septic tanks. Most septic tanks on the island have a bottomless design which allows wastewater to quickly seep through the ground. This poses high risk of contamination in fresh and seawater according to Dr. Merlinda Placencia who introduced eco-septic systems in Shargal. Um, that's a serious issue here. If your septic tank isn't enclosed, then where do you think that waste goes? Into the ground. And where do you think it goes from there? If it can't go deeper, it'll spread out into the waters. They said we're going to check every resort and validate them, but they've, they've already found there's so many that are violating their their agreement. I'll go to a next report. Now, before I go to that, I just want to talk about education. Okay? Now, education, I feel, is the key to maintaining 
the eco system. Um, in Australia, we had a program back, I believe it was in uh, 1968. It was like a, almost like a big ad campaign. The ad campaign was called Keep Australia Beautiful. Now, I'll just read a little article here. Keep Australia Beautiful is a non-profit Australian environmental conservation organisation. The Keep Australia Beautiful National Association is a federation of independent organisations formed in each Australian state and territories. The first of which, Keep Australia Beautiful, Victoria, now Keep Victoria Beautiful, was formed in Melbourne in 1968 by Dame Phyllis Frost. Keep Australia Beautiful is best known for its Do the Right Thing campaign against littering, as well as its national awards program, including the Australian Tidy Town Awards, the Australian Sustainable Cities Award and Australian Clean Beaches Award. Keep Australia Beautiful also offer community recycling grants as well as corporate volunteering and litter resources. Keeping Keep Australia Beautiful became the national operator for the International Environment Education Program, Eco Schools in 2014. Now, when I was growing up as a as a kid going through school, we were all taught this in literally in primary school. Keep Australia beautiful. Don't throw your litter anywhere. Um, so it's been programmed into us from little kids that it wasn't nice to throw things around you know if there's a bin put it in the bin if there's no bin take it with you until you find a bin another article that i found uh, we had another another advertising campaign clean up australia um, clean up australia limited again is a non-for-profit australian environmental conservation organization Founded by Australians Ian Kiernan and Kim McKay in 1989, it works to foster relationships between the community, business and government to address the environmental issues of waste, water and climate change. Since its inception, Clean Up Australia has grown to include other projects and campaigns including Business Clean Up Day, School Clean Up Day, Clean Up the Alps, Clean Up the Kimberley and Clean Up the World. This organisation is behind Clean Up Australia Day, as well as other environmental projects and campaigns. Now, Clean Up Day is held on the first Sunday of March every year and encourages people to clean up their local areas. Any person can register a place they plan to clean up on Clean Up Australia website and others can join them there. Activities on the day include removing large items such as car bodies and from waterways and the collection of general waste lying around. So as you can see, guys, here in Australia, it's big business for us to keep our environment clean. Now, there are the unscrupulous, dodgy operators out there who don't care, don't want to care and do the wrong thing. But the majority of the population in Australia does the right thing. We've been brought up on this to keep Australia clean. So that's one thing I believe is the main key, especially in the Philippines. If you wanna, if you guys in the Philippines wanna improve the rubbish situation with waste, plastics, and all of that, um, we now in Australia, the major supermarkets have actually banned single-use plastic bags, and they're looking at other ways to sort of minimise plastics in our society. Now, another report I found here from uh, the business world, this was dated August 5th, 2018, um, and it says, Xiaogao Rep says domestic tourists are the main polluters. Now, that's what I've been thinking a lot, a lot of the times. I lived in the Philippines for over a year, and I've seen a lot of tourists, and I obviously saw a lot of locals there. And I never saw one tourist throw anything, whether he bought it off the street, whether he bought it in a, one of those um, fast food stalls from the out, from along the streets. He always looked for some, somewhere to throw the bin and he always handed it back to the lady or the man. If he couldn't find nothing, they took it and they disposed of it, hoping appropriately. Now this report um, by Maya M. Padillo, um, she says, as Chiago Island gears up as the pilot site of a joint private public se sector sustainable tourism project, 
its congressional representative flagged that domestic tourists are the ones mainly in need of lessons on environmental awareness and protection. Repu I think that's Republican. Um, Rep. Francisco Jose F. Matugas II of Surigao del Norte's 1st District, which covers Chiaragao, said Filipino visitors have significantly increased in the past year, and along with them the amount of garbage at the beaches, including plastic wastes. He noted that foreign tourists used to comprise up to 90% of arrivals on the island. We don't have problems during that time because foreigners are already educated in the terms of garbage disposal. Most of them don't bring plastics. Foreigners are educated with environment hazards and they are very particular on that. Mr. Matugas said in an interview on the sidelines of the launching of the Juan Effect Sustainable Tourism Project of Airline Cebu Pacific in partnership with the Department of Tourism, the DOT, Chargo will be the pilot site of the project, which aims to, which aims to promote responsible travel, the airline, uh, responsible travel. The airline and the DOT will collaborate with local stakeholders for specific environmental conservation action plans. He also goes on to say, Mr. Matugas said the tourism office recorded about 600,000 arrivals from January to July this year. This is back in 18. And this project is, uh, and the projection is it will hit the 1 million mark by the end of 2018. So that's from 600,000 to a million, it's, it's almost double. Um, of these, he added 50% are local tourists. It's now 50%, 50% between foreign and local tourists. Sometimes it's more local. You can see it on the plane, he said, referring to domestic flights to Chiaga from Manila and Cebu. The congressman said he is optimistic that with the launching of the One Effect program, Chiaga would see less waste, particularly single-use plastics. Um, we are very happy to have this program. The impact of single-use plastics is very bad, he said. Mr. Matugas uh, also said there is already an ordinance covering the nine, town, the nine towns in Chiaga to ban single-use plastics. Now, I've been watching the videos and everyone seems to be doing the right thing now. They're banning the plastics. Um, they're going to, plast uh, to paper straws, bamboo straws or... Um, the metal straws. One thing I still noticed, I watched a few videos the other night and when you go to these local street vendors, when you're buying food from them, if it's sort of like a soup or a vegetable type of food, they're still giving it to you in the plastic bags. Uh, one video I saw the guy purchase some uh, pork, some lechon, and not only did they put it in one plastic bag for him, they put it in two. They put it in one and then they put that in another one. Um, but he's a foreigner. Fingers crossed, he knows what to do with that. So that's that um, article there. And then we have a bombshell that arrived about a week ago from Andy Eganman. Eganman. Uh, she just shared the side of Siargo you don't want to see. Um, apparently... I'll try and put the picture up here or here, be closer so I can so I can fit there. Um, no, I'll put it up there. That way you can see the picture. Uh, she posted this picture about a week ago, and it's it's gone viral. Again, I will read from the article. Shargao, it's been described as one of the best islands in Asia, alongside Barake and Palawan. No wonder people keep coming back to Shargao. Some, is, some even visit the island just to move on from a breakup. A lot of celebs have spent many a vacay in Chargo, like James Reed and Nardine Luster, Luster, who celebrated the second anniversary there. They've also been coming back with friends to enjoy the island. We've seen Solon Husaf and Kelsey Merritt posting their surfing snaps too. And remember Chargo, the movie? Yeah. Um, it seems like anywhere you go in Shargo, you'll end up with an Instagram-worthy shot. Andy Egerman, who has been living on the island for a while now, has shared before how blessed she used to live in paradise. But today, this refers to probably, um, what's that, uh, April 20th, she, she posted this picture. She said, today, Andy shared a totally eye-opening and shocking post about Shargo. The side of Shargo you don't see. She captioned the IG story, the side of Shargo you don't see. And I'll put that right there so you can see. And as you can see, it's disgusting. It is a landfill site. Unfortunately, 
most cities, towns will do, will have these, but these beautiful paradise virgin islands of the Philippines are slowly, slowly ending up having these. Um, it's terrible. Um, you saw the tourists are arriving there. And I mean, they're not throwing their stuff away. They go to a restaurant whenever they purchase something or do something in a restaurant and that. They're not, they, you expect the operators or the proprietors to dispose of the rubbish properly. But most of the stuff that you buy and you consume in restaurants and hotels obviously got to go somewhere. And where do you think that goes? That goes into landfill. So that's impacting on Chiaga because they don't have the proper facilities. Um, the photo features a mountain of trash on the island as shared by Rafael Nogalo, a Chiago local and surf instructor. His post has now earned more than 1,500 likes as this posting. He even has a video to give a saddening 360 degree view of Chiago's waste problem. It's seriously disturbing. Now the picture that should be there is not turning up so I can't show you that one. It goes on to say, while tourists sip cocktails on Chiago's picture perfect beaches, mountains of rubbish are piled up in back roads, poisoning the groundwater and creating irre irreversible damage to our beloved island home. Is this the number one island in Asia? Question mark. The real beauty behind hashtag Chiago Island. More tourists, more business, more trash. Recently, Andy shared photos from a beautiful maternity shot in Chiago. In the past, she has described Chiago as her daughter Elle's giant playground. She's also been a huge fan of surfing, even doing the sport as a form of exercise while pregnant. So yeah, there you have it guys. We have a serious problem occurring in Shargal. I don't know what can be done. The government needs to step in. Um, you've seen <clears throat> the situation in Borake. That has been gradually getting worse and worse over the last two decades. Shargo, on the other hand, has looks like it's it's jumped ahead. It's gone from woe to look out, I'm here, and I don't believe the infrastructure there is worthy of handling all of that congestion of waste. Um, the DNR, this is another article, this is May 30th, so this was just uh, two days ago. The DNR to launch operation on viral trash site, um, this is from Manila. The Department of Environmental and Natural, De uh, Natural Resources, the DENR, on Thursday confirmed that an operation is underway to address Chiago's trash situation. A photo of which went viral on social media this week. Um, in a phone interview, Environmental Undersecretary Benny Antiporida told ABS CBN News that the DENR is currently working on a plan concerning the island's waste issue. However, the officials the official refused to disclose details about the plan, but said it will be available in the next few days. Um, Buster in the next few days. In an Instagram post, it refers back to the Mr. Rafael Nog Nogalo, who shed the light on the island's waste management problem, blaming it on the booming tourism and businesses. Now you can't you can't really blame it on the tourists when the place is open. That's what you do. You go to a place, you tell your friend, he's going to come there. And then he's going to tell his friend. And then the groups who arrive will increase and increase. But with a lot of these YouTubers now traveling the Philippines, vlogging, and they're, they're showcasing these places on an international platform. And the old case of a friend telling one friend to go back with his wife is, is gone. Now one vlogger's telling 200 to 300,000 subscribers, maybe more, some of these big vloggers, they go there and within hours they got three, 400,000 views. Some of them even get millions within a couple of months. So that exposure is, it's blown up. It's getting ridiculous and something needs to be done. The DENR has actually issued notice of violation to 90 of the actual businesses and we will see what's going to eventuate from that. Now I'll just go to this last report which just popped up 10 hours ago which is 20 hours ago compared to where I saw it but this is from uh, uh, MSN News. Now this last article is titled Chiaga Island Faces Trash Disposal Problem. There was trouble brewing in the island paradise of Chiaga. According to a report by GMA News, Joseph Morong in 25 Oras 
On Thursday, a significant amount of trash in the island can be seen even if there was a clear attempt to hide it under the sand. The trash spotted including glass bottles and electronic devices. General, General Luna Mayor of Veronica Soloso admitted that disposing of trash is a problem since the local government is still working on securing a permanent dump site for the island's trash. So what does that mean? They're looking for a place that they can just go in, destroy and use it as a dump site. So this is, this is what breaks my heart, how they just, more or less, the tourists, whether it's locals or or the foreign tourists, when you get an influx of a million people, their shit has to go somewhere. So this is what happens. This is the price you pay for tourism. So also, however, said the local government would need additional funds to pay the private owner of the site. He referred to, um, was it Jung? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. Angna identified Namin the Bagon dump site, dumping site is Pasado, so EMB, Environmental Management Bureau. Um, she said the local governments would need additional funds to pay the private owner of the site. General Luna Administrative Officer PJ Gorgonio, for his part, said the negotiations are ongoing for the pro provincial governments to buy the said land to be used as a dump site. No place is ideal for a landfill. Things need to be done. They need to come up with another method of disposing of this waste that's going to be safe for the people, safe for the environment. And years ago, they people used to just burn it. Now, we can't be doing that. You might be able to do it if you can build a strong enough incinerator that's going to be efficient enough to burn and just, ex just expel clean, oxygenated air. But I'm not sure if we have those yet. Salosa said the island problem with his trash was not turning off visitors, which means it's, even though there's trash there, it's not affecting the tourist influx. So, yeah, um, Shargal, shocking, serious problem. Something needs to be done. The government needs to pull their finger out and do something immediately before it turns into Barake. This has happened in Barake, but it's taken 20, 20 years to get there. Chicago has been a tourist destination now and it's been booming for the last year and a half, maybe two, and it's already facing these problems. So something needs to be done immediately so Chicago doesn't end up like Barake. If you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comment. This was just a bit of a heads up. And like I said, this is all about education. Children need to be educated from an early age and hopefully the new generations as they come into their older years and then they're having children, hopefully they will do the same with them. It can't happen overnight. This is a generational thing that needs time. It needs money. It needs support by the government and hopefully with the, with the foreigners vlogging on YouTube and trying to Tell people it's not the right thing to do. You need to take your trash. Don't litter. Keep, like in Australia, keep Australia beautiful. Keep the Philippines beautiful. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed, thanks for watching this again. And make sure you share this with all your friends. So until my next video, guys, peace out.